Entering the 2021-2022 season, the Rebels' mix of new faces with key returners provided a glimpse into the bright days ahead for the program. My first Square Jam, man, it's been amazing. All these beautiful people here, man, it's just been amazing. All Miss with its first signature win of the year. It withstands the lead surge and takes down 18th ranked Memphis, 67-63. Around Jarkel Joyner gets the loose ball ahead to Crowley, two-handed jam. You feel my guy did it without me, man. I can't wait to be back. And Ruffin only played a couple games. You mentioned with that broken right hand early in this season. I think it's safe to say the freshman from Jackson, Mississippi, has found his stride in this season. It's Ruffin again. Lays it up and he finishes takeover mode. And the Rebels likely going to hold another opponent under 70 points. Anthony Grant has a very tenacious Flyers team this year, but Ole Miss is going to win its fifth over its last six. A quality win tonight for the Rebels. Along with every key victory also came a devastating setback on the injury front. Without two dynamic guards for a portion of the season, the Rebels remained in the fight despite the setbacks. There is a Ole Miss player, that is Robert Allen, who is down in the corner. You know, Robert Allen got hurt. He's going to get MRI tomorrow. I don't know what it is. It, it could be, you know, it could be serious. You know, now you just, you know, got Deshaun Ruffin out, and, you know, that's going to be a big lift. We can get him back maybe in a couple weeks. So you hate it, but you just got to fight through it and, you know, and keep these guys working. As the new year began, the youthful Rebels started to make an impact on the SEC. Close calls against top-ranked teams and upset victories lay ahead for Kermit Davis' squad. But first, they will play host in the annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. Senior Robert Allen tore his ACL December 4th, but the team leader never stopped leading the way. But while his teammates take the floor for practice, Robert's adjusting to the new life of rehab. For the most part, I come in and uh, normally like three times, three to four times a week, and uh, I warm up, which is what I did, get my hamstrings going and stuff. We do some quad things, and then we do extent. We do flex, flexion first, working on bending it, and then we do extensions, working on getting my knee as straight as possible. But I see this now as a great. It taught me so many lessons. One about myself, about my mental. Now I have a bionic knee, and I get a chance to build my knees and my legs again. It's like a lot of like tightness, like in here. And I can feel it like grabbing, if you know what I mean. 18, 20, give me a breath. <sighs> 22. We gotta get at least 23 for MJ. 23. <sighs> Shoot, boy. Well, I wasn't at the most pain it could have been at. Like when we went to go get 20 the other day, mm -hmm. I was definitely like, okay. Hi. I felt that. Get that quad warmed up for me. I like in here just because it's like a big family. We all interact with each other, we all motivate each other, we all communicate. Like when I'm in here, I feel like I'm not going through this alone. Yo, I just want to let y'all know that my best bud in this training room is a pro golfer right here. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna be seeing him on like, with Tiger Woods in them one day. Hey, come on, come on, come on. 140? Give me some. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. You officially have two knees now. Yeah. I think I'm grateful for you like graduating from like the room. This is like the, the treatment room because like that gives me like a lot of motivation to keep going for sure. 
we're not done here. We gotta go through the whole, everyone makes, makes I make everyone say what they're grateful for. That's what are you grateful for? Um, let's see, that it's Friday. <laughs> yeah, it is Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you enter the dog days of the season, is there anything better than leaning on the comfort of man's best friend? Ever since I was young, I always had a dog. When I was younger, I had two Rottweilers who were brothers and sisters. And I knew from the time that I had them that I'm like, I've always got to have a dog with me. I always got to have my companion with me. I come home, I get him out of his cage. I go for, I go for a walk around here just to get his legs moving and stuff like that. Then I take him to the dog park. Usually in the dog park, he'd be a lot of dogs. Take him to the dog park, let him run around, let him get his, all, all this energy out that he had today. The dog is very over dramatic. Sit down. Sit. Very over dramatic. Very. And his name is a combination of my mother's name and my aunt name, which is Monique and Joey. I first got Mojo last year around this time. He was maybe like two, three months when I first got him. He was about the size, like the length of my arm. Real small puppy with a with a bad cough. Got him on December 24th, the day before Christmas. So he was kind of like my Christmas gift. Ever since that day, man, he's been by my side. He never leaves my side. I got the dog as a gift. He came from Florida. I really wanted a dog for Christmas, so I got him around Christmas time. And uh, basically, he really been my best friend ever since. So I got him at like two months. In the beginning, I'll be honest, my parents didn't. I don't think my parents wanted me to have a dog because they knew the responsibility it came with. My dad was like, he was like, do you really need a dog, do you really need a dog? Now when I take him around my dad, my dad loves him more than he ever did ever before. Like he loves Ace so much. Just over time, Mojo, he just brings a lot of like happiness and joy in, into my life. Like, just going home and seeing him, like it don't matter what's on my mind, like as soon as I just see his face, it's just, he's just so sweet and loving. I try not to treat him too much like a human, but how can you resist this face? Zeus helped me grow up too, just, you know, having to take care of him. And, you know, if you don't take care of a dog, it's going to show. So having to take care of him, really, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just a responsibility. I like having that responsibility because it's teaching me, you know, through college, through everything, through practice and stuff. Come home, walk my dog, make sure you got food, make sure you got water, make sure you go to his, like, vet's appointments and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's really a responsibility when you have a dog. Everybody loves him, so. Best, he's the best companion I can I can ask for, you know. Uh, it's a million dollars out there, but I don't think I want nobody but Ace. In the summer of 2021, the Ole Miss family of legends celebrated in the recognition of Coolidge Ball, the first African-American scholarship athlete to compete at the university. The plans to upgrade the visual legacy of the barrier-breaking all-century team member started with a call from current athletic director, Keith Carter. Wow, I wonder what they want. You know, you always think of it, wonder about things. And, and uh, he told me that at Coolidge, we, uh, we have a, a bronze plaque on the pavilion of you. And he said, we don't think that's enough. We want to do a bronze statue. And I go, wow, you know. Uh, I said, you know, I just told him that. That was just something special because I had never dreamed of having a statue. To make the bronze, to go from this to this, you and I, because you're an artist and you'll get a kick on this, I won't bore them with it, but you had to make a mother mold, you have to make a plat base so that it stays in this shape because if we ever cast that in bronze, that size, you have to mold it from the maquette. Mr. Ball is the perfect guy for that statue. Uh, I see him all the time. He comes to our practices. Um, he meets everybody with their names. He knows everybody. I'll be there looking for you. Yes, sir. Hey, brother. How you doing? I want to tell you, one hug. I love you so much, bro. Thank you. As a native Mississippian, I got to see this guy firsthand. I was about 11 or 12 years old in Coolidge. I saw you play on the freshman team. When you averaged over 20 a game. I saw you play for three straight years, a couple times a year, in Starkville and in Oxford. And I saw you get over a thousand points. I think it was around my senior year in high school. He wound up showing us, me and my brother, a film of him. I'm talking about the old wind up film. And we had projected it on the board. And I was, I was stunned because I'd never seen him play. And it was incredible. I remember when we started uh, 
scrimmaging with Coolidge at first. He was an amazing athlete, so quick, could jump, could play, just took the game to another level. It's just it's a great moment, not just for Ole Miss, but for our state. You know, we're going to honor Coolidge as the first black scholarship athlete, but really we're going to honor him on so many other fronts. Not only what kind of player he was, but when you watched him play, he had such a humble uh, disposition, his grace, uh, his dignity the way he played. He's a graduate of Ole Miss. And then you know what he thinks about Ole Miss? He lives in Oxford. So Coolidge is a great story. It means a lot for everybody, and especially Ole Miss now, 50 years later. Well, I wear his number, though, so that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, number one's better, though. The number one. You tell, tell Mr. Coolidge that. Like, no, I wouldn't tell him. <laughs> he, he got no. the statue. I ain't got a statue. All I right, can't tell right. him that. <laughs> While Coolidge made the game look easy during his time as a rebel, Growing up, the biggest challenge was finding kids his age that could keep up with him on the hardwood. Well, I always played against older guys because the, the guys at that time of my age, is, the size, it, it was kind of boring to play with them because I always beat them. There was always a crowd coming around, wanted to play because we had a regulation go there and they just, I mean, white guys, black, you know, they see us out there playing, they'll stop and, uh, hey, let's play some ball with the balls. From humble beginnings on the farm to stardom in Oxford, the rangy forward from Indianola would lean on loving teammates to help navigate any storms he may face. Probably my best memory is my teammates because, you know, your teammates, you're gonna be with them every day. And I had great teammates, and they, they all treated me like any other 18-year-old freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. At that point in time, that many years ago, I didn't think too much about that. I, I was used to playing with black guys back in my hometown, and uh, they became friends. And so it's interesting when you are a teammate and a friend, you really don't see black and white. I knew what, what it meant, and uh, I just think I was the right person for that. I didn't come right away. It took me all summer before I got here. But in August 1970, I became a rebel. And I've been a rebel ever since then. Carried himself extremely well. He's a no-nonsense guy, but he's a gentle giant off the court. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, headed out to the mound now for our ceremonial first pitch along with head coach Mike Bianco. Please welcome to the field, Coolidge Ball. When I look back and think about to when they built the pavilion and that he was honored, it just means a lot because he was the first. It's because of what he does for Ole Miss, he's a very famous person in Oxford. He's, he gets noticed everywhere. And just for him to notice you, is, it's a great feeling. It means a lot to me, man. You know, as a Mississippi kid, just seeing that statue out there, you know, when I walk to class every day, I just look at it and just, you know, kind of admire the statue, man. And I'm grateful to, you know, be following in his footsteps. It's almost like your legacy has been fulfilled. Your place and time is solidified. You made a difference. Mr. Ball's legacy will live on forever as his bronze figure reminds us of what was and what could be when everyone is given the same opportunities. That's probably the biggest thing that he has taught us is to, to be a difference maker. You make a difference in one person's life that lasts a lifetime. I can get along with anybody. I'll just talk with whoever wants to talk, and I don't, sometimes I don't uh, start the conversation. Once people got to know me, they, it was just real easy. It's really those life lessons that I probably take, that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. With the Kansas State Wildcats rolling into Oxford, both teams are eyeing a big non-conference win. We welcome you to the Pavilion in Oxford, Mississippi. The Ole Miss Rebels taking on the Wildcats of Kansas State. From the jump, the Rebels brought great energy onto Craddock Court. Ruffin in the front court. Ole Miss drives to the left side of the lane for the layup. Two and a Rebels strike first. 
transition, Ole Miss gets the bucket the other way. Drives to the paint, no look, pass it over Lingard for a dunk. Standing man to man, rough and loose and low to Brooks for the dunk. He caught it, he's it over the rim. In the paint with him, a girl out to the wing, and the three's on his way, and good for Pack. He's hit back to back threes. Cats have a two point lead, eight to six, their biggest here in the early goals. After a frantic start to the game, injured team captain Robert Allen's calm demeanor and positivity helped the Rebels settle in. He can't guard you. Lay! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! If he wants it, skips the pass to Vanderhyde. Left corner for Crowley. Pulls for a three. Good! Hey, hey, not down, boy. Hey! Oh, Good job, Matt. That's it right there. That's it right there. While the home team was cooking up offense, the defense remained hungry in building a lead. They have missed their last eight shots Kansas State has. Ole Miss has its largest lead into you. A nice shot blocked by Ruffin. There's a effort by Matthew Wells. Take, but a nice job erasing it by Fagan. Two on two, Ole Miss in transition. It's Brakefield. <laughs> two, there's a block by Morrell. Kansas State is 8 for 32 from the field, just 25%. Oh, that'll be the end of half number one. Ole Miss dominated it. Rebels 30, Wildcats 24. Fagan on the attack. Fagan with a strong left hand. Ruffin pump fake. Takes it strong. That's a beautiful move by the five foot nine freshman, Deshaun Ruffin. Beautiful move by Mark Smith down low. Nigel Pack left alone, the top three-point shooter on the team. Dribbles off the screen, works to the lane, pulls up, turns the lay in over the side iron. That's Fagan's game, and boy needed that right there. Tough shot by Crowley, and he gets a friendly bounce. Tough shot on the run by Morrell. Good look there, good form on that triple. That's Jamin Brakefield. Put him away, put him away right here. Ruffin leaving, stopping, popping, beautiful move. Kansas State drives in the paint, left-handed layup, blocked by Brooks, rebounded by Ruffin. Ruffin's got another board. Back to Ruffin. Ruffin fakes right, goes left for the layup, and he put the big man in his hip pocket. 
Take it to the and one. There's that basketball IQ and flat out ability by the talented freshman. The maturity, the confidence, the decision making is so much better where you can have faith to put the ball in his hands in a spot like this. Nine seconds, eight seconds, Fagan to the center line, one-on-one. -on -one. Tries to drive with four seconds, gets to the paint for the layup. Wow, Ty Fagan, that's a veteran play, too. Fires a long three, off the back iron, no good. Rebound, Breakfield goes in and pulls it out of there for Ole Miss. He's double-teamed the corner. He'll get raked and fouled over there. Kansas State is not going to foul if the clock run out, and the Rebels are going to get the win. They go to 11 and 10 on the year. Nice job by Ole Miss, start to finish. 67-56, and that's it. There's the horn and the win. So Ole Miss wins for the first time ever in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Got to get a winning count, man. SEC Big 12 Challenge. We're in the best colors in the world, man. Go real. Wonderful, great dub. We needed that one right here. We won! And I can walk! Time out! On the play! <laughs> Got the wing in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Now I'm going home and watch some more basketball. We're going for the SEC, the best league in college basketball. Big Dubs, you already know what we got. You already know. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. You know we got a big time ahead of us, you know. Hey, Rebel Nation, I said pregame. I told them. Pregame, we needed this one. We're going to get it done. Be up. Sometimes we just, I thought at the end of the game, we did the right things to try to win the game, right? To win the game, which was good. So you guys off the bench, played great off the bench, Austin. Raymond, Eric, go there. Yeah. The first time that Ole Miss has won a game in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, a big game. it's a big deal, man. It's a big deal. I promise you. Never take that light at all when all the SEC eyes are watching all the games. Now we get to go to Baton Rouge. Yeah. Somebody we haven't beat. Yes, sir. Really good win. Take good care of yourself. Treat them. I mean, let's be at our very best on Tuesday. Yes, right? sir. Congratulations, guys. Man, the dub felt great, man. We needed a nice win at home. Just want to Baton Rouge next to try to get another W.